Hey guys, before I get into the video, I just wanted to apologize for the over-the-shoulder iPhone camera view because uh, I had all of my audio or all of my video pulled through my server um, and my server crashed over the weekend, so I lost all of the screen recordings that I had shot for this video. So I apologize ahead of time. You'll only get the raw camera capture instead of the actual screen capture, so it's not going to look as good. Just wanted to get that out of the way up front, so we'll roll the intro now. Instead of doing my review on a virtual machine, I wanted to do a quick look using some actual hardware. A friend of mine has given me a Toshiba satellite from 2012 to repair for him so he can um, use it. And it's a satellite L755. It's from about 2012. It has a Core i5-2430, which is four cores at 2.4 gigahertz with no hyperthreading. It has six gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a 500 gigabyte Toshiba hard drive. After it's formatted and the OS sees it, you have 465 gigabytes free. Ubuntu doesn't take up that much space. It's just that the standards between hard drive manufacturers and what is generally used in an operating system are a little bit different. Okay, with that out of the way, this is a pretty rapid reaction, fast look video. Given that this is just a beta, my goal is trying to get an idea of what Ubuntu with Deepin could be like. I've always liked the idea of Deepin, but the OS has had some privacy concerns a couple years back that seems like it's resolved at this point. Personally though, anything from a Chinese corporation, and that is therefore beholden to the CCP, makes me a little uncomfortable, which is why I never use Deepin. And using the desktop environment alone has always been buggy for me. However, Ubuntu using Deepin as the primary desktop environment for one of their distros has got me intrigued. I'm just going to give my thoughts, but I promise to keep in mind that this is still a beta, and you should remember that as well. The install process requires setting up some manual partitions. It's not a big deal. You can just make a swap file and a BIOS or UFI boot partition. It's fine. I suspect an automated partitioner will come out by the time this is finalized as a shipping ISO. The username and password created during the install process is present, but so is the default Ubuntu DDE account. It wasn't a major issue though, as you can delete it via the terminal or remove its permissions if you don't want it as part of the wheel group. Speaking of the terminal, I couldn't find one right away. I've seen others install one from the software store that's pre-installed on the distro, but you can actually find the terminal and launch it from the store. It's somewhat obnoxious, but at least it's there. So others were not able to find it. Mine was there. It just was in a strange place. In going through and testing some of the different apps, several of them do seem to crash on launch. They report an error, and then they reopen without an issue. It's a beta. The iconography across the system is a little inconsistent, even if you change the icon theme. It's a minor nitpick, really, as the system overall, it still looks really great. The control center style sidebar is very convenient and it looks wonderful. Even in beta, the development team behind the Deepin desktop environment has done a superb job. This ran super smooth on a 2012 Toshiba laptop. Because it's canonical and there's still some up in the air questions about trackers, even very minor trackers that Canonical has on the system, the, somebody's going to ask if the trackers are there. What I have found is that the Ubuntu report is not on the system, but the popularity contest is, so keep that in mind. I'm just going to briefly touch on YouTube performance playback. Um, on this particular hardware, I tell you what, looking at a 17-inch screen, that's 720p, is really stepping back in time a little bit on this. Um, I remember selling these things when I worked at Best Buy in a former life. So <laughs> this, is, uh, this is kind of a little bit of a nostalgia for me. I am impressed, however, that it does play back 1080p, even though it can only render it at 720p. After watching a Digital Foundry video at 1080p, the dropped frames, it was only 256 drop frames out of about 7,000, which is incredibly respectable for an 8-year-old computer. So, 
keep that in mind. Uh, YouTube playback, pretty solid. On a system like this, the point is not really about the hardware so much as it is about Ubuntu. Even in Ubuntu Deepin, even in this beta state, is still performing very well and quite respectably. So that's it, everyone. A quick look at Ubuntu Deepin Desktop Edition. I'm excited for it. I really hope that it's going to be really well polished when it, it hits, um, well, what Windows would call it a gold master version. I don't know if anybody else uses that term. So when it goes live and it's actually going out to everyone, it's not in beta anymore. I hope that it's going to be super smooth, really polished. I can't wait to try it myself. I hope you're excited for it as well. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great one.